had a vasectomy. I always thought, like, this was when I was, um, I don't know, maybe, like, in high school or whatever. I always thought that a vasectomy, like, when you come, like, nothing comes mm. out. And as an adult, I oh, never confirmed no. or denied that. So you you can still come. Call from... Wes. To accept... Hello? Hi. What's your name? Wes. Wes. Uh, what's going on with you, Wes? Um... Well, I'm I'm laying on the couch, uh, recovering from surgery. Oh, what kind of surgery did you get? Oh, I had a vasectomy. You had a vasectomy. Yep. And um, how is how are how are your balls? The, the vasectomy is is in the balls, right? Yeah, yeah. What they do is they just snip, snip, and then you have no swimmers. Um, so how long, how long does the surgery take? I mean, it's more of a procedure. It's like 10, 10, 15 minutes. Okay. Not you even. know, look, okay. So it's a procedure. It sounds surgical. They're go they're cutting open your balls <laughs> and they're like, they take a, this is how, this is in my mind, what a vasectomy is. They cut your balls open and they take like a hose okay. and they basically do liposuction on your balls, but for cum. How how medically accurate is that? <laughs> no, on a scale no, from no, one no, to no. ten. No. That's probably like, you know, you had everything except the going in part, like, you know, like accurate. But then yeah. once you're inside, you had it all wrong. You just okay. All wrong. So they do they do make an incision on your ball. I mean, I assume you were asleep for this, unless if you were like, no, no, keep me awake. I want to No, watch. no, you're not. You're, you're awake. Yeah. You're awake? Yeah. Yep, you're sitting there with your legs open while a urologist does this to you. Um, really? So they make an incision? Where do they make the incision? It's like right down the middle. Right but down like, the middle of your, but like of your taint or of your balls? Of your, of your balls, yeah. So you were awake when somebody sliced yeah. your balls open? Yeah. How was that? Sounds really painful. Well, yeah. I mean, you have you're you're, you're kind of sitting there, and then they like pull the tube that connects your your ball. You know the 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 vast difference of a sperm duct, I guess. And like they they pull that out through the hole, and then cut it, cauterize each end, put that one back, and then do the other side. Okay, and it only took like ten minutes. Yeah. It, was it simple enough that after watching them do it on you, you felt like, you, you know, you could do it successfully on somebody else? <laughs> I mean, no, because of like, I feel comfortable that I did my own research, but I think, um, yeah, based off of that, I just felt, you know, like I did a lot of research myself, so that made me more comfortable with the procedure, I think. You know. Now, with you being awake, you know, when I was like a kid, I mean, even now, like when I get a shot or like when they prick my finger or something, I'll, I don't like to look. I look away. Did you look, did mm -hmm. you watch them cut your balls open or did you look away? Like, did they have no. like a TV or something? So, you know, like the exam table in a doctor's office with like the great, the, the, you know, whatever the paper on it. Mm-hmm. That's basically what you're you're sitting on. So you just lay back and look at the ceiling or whatever while, while, while this is going on. What were you thinking about? Like, do you remember the actual thoughts going on in your head while this was happening? Yeah, yeah, I do. Um, oh, God. Oh, God. Ow. Um, whoa. <clears throat> Wait, at, hold on. At what, at what point in the procedure did you go, whoa? I think that was when they injected the numbing agent into that tube and it like activated that whole fainting response. It like shot right up my back and I like started to faint. Oh, okay. So it like, <laughs> it kind of, it shook you a little bit and that let, made you let out that yeah. noise. Okay. Exactly. Um, and did you thank the doctor afterwards? You know, I think, I think he just knew because the guy was like 85 and I was like, you know, he's, he's probably way more of an expert than I would ever, 
I know that didn't answer your question, but <laughs> that sort of answered. That sort of answered my question. Um, do they numb the area before they cut your balls open, or they just go for it? Yeah, yeah, it gets numbed. Hmm. So theoretically, um, it's supposed to be a painless procedure, but it's not not for some people, I guess. <laughs> and when did this happen? When was this all taking place? Oh, a um, couple days ago, actually. Well, well, Thursday, okay. Friday. Thursday. How are you? How are your balls feeling now? Like they need eternal rest. Really? So it's still pretty pretty fucked up down there. I mean, yeah, it's not like fucked up, fucked up, but it's just like sore. You know, it feels like okay. you're recovering from a really bad kick in the balls. Mm -hmm. All right, so let's. I want to talk about uh, the stuff around the procedure. What made you want to get a vasectomy? Oh, uh, well, we had welcomed our second kid uh, into the world uh, well, well, uh, two days after my birthday. Mm -hmm. um, and, yeah, we kind of just knew, like, we were not going to have any more kids because it's a lot um, for, you know, when they're close together, our kids are close together. Um, but beside the point, um it was the least invasive overall um, form of permanent birth control. Hmm. Okay. For either person. Okay. Um, now, does it? Oh, no, I'm still. I still have medical questions for you. I always thought, and I never. I, like this was when I was. Um, I don't know. Maybe like in high school or whatever. I always thought that a vasectomy, like, w like when you come, like nothing comes mm -hmm. out. And as an adult, I oh, never confirmed no. or denied that. So you you can still come. Yeah, of course. Yeah, because that's not. It's just like you're. The only thing you're doing is you're cutting off one of the ingredients to the, uh, the cocktail. Okay. But so nothing changes. Nothing at all, except that you're sterile. Okay. Um, and you know what? Look, by the way, I think this this sounds like it was a well thought out decision because you had two already, and I don't, uh, I don't, and no offense to anyone who has more than two kids, but I can't, I don't know what would be added to your life by having more than two kids. I mean, I guess one of the positives is that they could all raise each other, right? So you don't have to really do much, but. That wasn't our modus operandi. <laughs> I feel like um, a baby raising a baby would, both of the babies would die immediately. Well, but that's why you need like 14 kids back to back. So like, as you're mm. popping them out, they're all cared for by the oldest, you know? You know, okay, you're actually, I kind of like where you're going at with this because you're right. I think two two babies would just die immediately, but 14 yeah. babies, put them all in like a pin, kind of like Rugrats. They'd figure something, they'd kind of figure it out probably. Yeah, I mean, I, you know, who knows? That would be Stanford material. Yeah, I don't think this conversation is making it to Stanford, but, um, <laughs> what? Okay, so, so you, how is things going with the two kids? How old are the two kids that you have now? Um, well, one of them, our oldest, she is um, a year, well, oh, yeah, so a year and six months, or yeah. year and a half, a little over a year and a half. Year and a half, okay. Um, and then the youngest was born this past January, so he's a okay. month old. So they're only, they only have like a year age gap, pretty much. Uh, four, 16 months. 16 months, okay, that, that's a year. Mm -hmm. When they yeah. when when they are both like when they're like thirteen and fourteen, they're not going to be saying sixteen months. They'll be like he's a year older. Although wait a minute, so that means that there's going to be a, wait a minute. That means that there's going to be a See, four okay, months. You want to know something crazy about this? Do you want to sure. know something crazy? Sure. Okay, so <clears throat> our oldest um, was born in September, and my sister was born in September, and then our youngest was born in January. And I was born in January. So our kids are the exact same, di like within a couple days, one or two days off 
of the exact same birthdays that my parents had, which is not like something that we planned at all. It just happened this way. <laughs> that would like, be kind just, of weird if you did plan it. No. Well, yeah. Yeah. But I mean, I, I don't even know what you'd have to, to plan to plan that. Well, I mean, you would con <laughs> you'd, you'd conceive uh, well, yeah, nine months before your mom's birthday. But that would I, I was just saying it'd be strange <laughs> if you were having sex with your wife and thinking about this is great because now we're going to have a child on my mom's birthday. See, no, that never, yeah, that never happened. Um, all right, you have two children. They're both alive. They're, they're only, and the fact that they're only one year older than that means that, um, are they, are they, you said, are they both, are they both boys or is it a boy and a girl? It's a boy and a girl. Okay. So they're both going to like be in like school together and. Mm -hmm. I assume I assume they'll be in the same like grade or like one's a grade above or the grade below. Yeah, probably a grade or two apart. Okay, so they'll be in each other's lives, sort of in in uh, in the the social universe of school. <laughs> yeah, um, whether that's a good thing or a bad thing. I think it's a I think it's a good thing. It's not. It's good. Like when you go to I my sister is. Um, when I was a freshman in high school, she was a. We actually went to different high schools, but um, she was a senior when I was a freshman. Um, and I don't know. It's. It's. it's uh, I think it's probably a good thing to have like an older sibling uh, looking out for you. You know, when you're in school. Yeah, that's true. Oh yes. Um, what do you do? What do you do for work? How do you make money to make the children not die? Well. So my wife and I, um, when we left the college, we kind of had to figure out, or we, we we decided to see, wait and see who was making the most money. Um, <laughs> you decided to and wait decided. and see who was making the most money. Yeah, okay. like getting jobs, you know, respectively, like in our own career paths, and whoever was the most promising or making the most amount of money or wanted, you know, particularly to be in a certain field or job or whatever, whoever had an inkling to stay there. Okay. And so, long story short, um, she uh, preferred to work, so I am the stay at home. Okay. Do you? Um, okay. So you don't. You did you go? What did you go to college for? Uh, computer science. Computer science. And you are you into that at all? Like, are you trying to find gigs coding things? Um, not right now. But I'm like, you know, I'm, I always look around i'm looking but not following <laughs> okay she prefers to work i don't know you know so so i don't know which job sounds worse or more difficult i mean i bet they are both have their own things but like staying at home with the kids and they're really young they probably they need a lot of attention right now because they're like one and shit right yep mm -hmm. okay well, this is you get a head start on imposing your own values onto them that she's not around for. <laughs> I mean, that's not, that's not I, you know, to be honest, I don't think I have thought about that. But I think now that you've said it, I will. Um, <laughs> they'll they'll grow they'll, when they when they grow up, they'll 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 subconsciously trust you more. <laughs> oh no. I don't know about that. Uh, is Subverting, she, is she, is she, she, hear, she can hear this, kids. right? <laughs> well, my wife? Yeah. Yeah. Um, what does she do? She is a software engineer. She's a software engineer. Okay. So both of you guys are computer nerds. Yes. Okay. <laughs> And uh, does she does she make enough money that is like she can you know support all all three of you guys? Um, mostly, yes. Um, that's pretty good. It's pretty good. Um, somebody in the chat just said I thought he said he was a soft core engineer at first, <laughs> which I guess would be soft core. <laughs> That's just, I don't know why I read that comment. All right. Um, what's your name again? What? 
Wes. I want. Did, what is there? I know we talk. We got. I got to learn a little bit about your life um, and your balls and how they don't work anymore. <laughs> um, mm-hmm. What is there anything before? I want to know. Is there anything that you'd like specifically called in to want to talk about besides your balls? Um. Hmm. Want to talk about? I mean, honestly, I, yeah, no, I think we're just, yeah, that's, I didn't really have a particular reason. I just wanted to say hi and have a conversation with you. Do you think you will miss, um, well, okay, so you, uh, you have not, okay, it's only been two days. You have not come since the procedure, right? <laughs> what is Why is that from? funny? <laughs> Well, I mean, the, the, wait, hold on. Wait, okay. Well, we, we are this whole the thesis of this this whole conversation. Uh, I'm not gonna say is centered around your vasectomy, but um, mm-hmm. I it I started see, okay, from that, fair. and fair. so I'm go- I'm I'm I was just I, before we before I let you go, I was like, I have, I have never got. I actually don't think I've ever had the com- the chance to talk to somebody who's had a vasectomy. So I'm like, before I let yeah, this guy go, I want to know if I I want th- if I have any other questions, and that's the, the question that I had. No, that's fair. That's fair. So so um, they you can't do that until about a week after. You have to wait. Dude, I bet it's going to hurt really badly the first time you come after this. Oh, don't make me think about it. Did your, what did your doctor, <laughs> like, is it going to, did your doctor tell you anything about, like, how it'll feel different? Or is it no. going to feel the same? Well, they said there's sometimes blood, but that's it. You said that's it, as if that's not a lot. <laughs> Probably gets, you know, but I think if you know if it's coming or, <laughs> then, uh, yeah, I guess the way it, I'm 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 having a lot of fun um, making in my own mind the med- the medical science of how a vasectomy works. I think if your doctor tells you that you're going to come blood, it's probably like there's a little bit of blood in your urethra right now, and when you come, it'll like wash it out, and then and then when you come afterwards, there'll be there won't be any more blood. It's just it's like left over. Is that how that works, like or that. is that, is that I, how that I works? I feel like it would be. I, I mean, yeah, I, I thought about it too, and I feel like it would have to be. You know, I you know, it's so much more fun to um, uh, like come up with um random ways that science might work that's based off of no research of any kind, um, than it is <laughs> well, to actually learn about this developed, stuff. Right? I guess so. I guess that's how the first, um, <laughs> like the very first people, man. Imagine the first vasectomy. Ooh. Well, I want you know it might have been unintentional, like getting kicked off by a horse. Right. And then the guy was like, "I can now have sex as much as I want without creating babies." Mm-hmm. Like, and he's like, yeah, "And he's no like, you guys got to try now. this. All you got to do is get kicked in the balls really hard by a horse, and that's probably how you feel right now." Is that you've been Charging, kicked really hard then, in the balls with a horse. Yeah, and then a vasectomy clinic was born, you know, stand behind Bessie, 10 bucks a pop, boom. Well, I think this conversation has gone on for far too long, but I enjoyed having it very much. <laughs> That's good, good. Um, your name is uh, Wes, correct? Wes, yep. Wes. Well, Wes, is there anything else you want to say to uh, me or God or... Um, <laughs> Or or Bugs Bunny before we go, or the people. Uh, that can hear. Okay, well, your body, your choice. You know that I guess that is that is um, um, true. That it's like that's like the men the the male abortion. <laughs> I don't know if I go that far, but. I don't know. I'm, I retract that. I have no fucking idea what I'm talking about. Anyway, thank you for calling, like Wes. like tube tied. Okay, all right. Bye. Have a good night, man. You too. Bye. Hmm. Wait, I thought getting your tubes tied was something that... I'm so fucking stupid. I thought it was something that guys do. I th- isn't that what a vasectomy is, getting your tubes tied? I don't know. I could delete this part from the podcast. Actually, keep it in. I don't know any. I'm fucking stupid. Hello? Hi. 
Oh god, I feel like I'm gonna panic. I'm okay. <laughs> yeah, no, 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 don't panic, don't panic. Hold on, I have to sneeze, which is a form of panic. Give me one sec. <laughs> I don't know why I said sneezing is a form of panic. I guess it is. It's you. It's um. <laughs> Allergens get into your nose, and your nose doesn't know what to do, so it panics in the form of a sneeze. So, I guess that's right. I, yeah, that I shouldn't. About right. <laughs> I shouldn't double. I shouldn't. Um, you know, question the things I say so much. I should just have confidence in them that they make sense. I mean, none of, no, none, none of nothing fucking makes sense. All the words that I'm saying right now were just declared to make sense by some royal lord a thousand years ago and he was just a guy who had diarrhea and died and so i'm a guy who's gonna die and will have diarrhea at some point so why can't i say random things that don't make any sense and declare them to make sense in my own version I mean, of reality that's entirely understandable i mean whatever you want to make sense will make sense and i feel like what i think i want to talk about today might make sense to you or it might not but my fiancé told me that I should talk to you about this if I ever got a hold of you, so I have an important thing to tell you. You know what? I like you, Carl. You're on board with me, and I appreciate that very much. Even And you know what? I can, I can actually tell in your voice that you don't think that what I said made sense, but that you're going along with it just to be nice to me, and that makes me like you even more. What is your name? My name is Julie. Julie, what's what's? tell me the thing that your, your fiancé wanted you to tell me. Okay, so I am a very strange person. To start off, I'm. <laughs> I usually get called weird by everybody I know for plenty of reasons, but this is one recently that my partner has called me very strange for. So, do you know those like lifelike CPR dolls? Um, I like where this is going. Yes. <laughs> so, me and my partner were talking recently about like how creepy and lifelike they are and how weird they are. And no. I told him that I would love to keep one as a friend. <laughs> as a and friend? And he asked me why. Yes, as a friend. <laughs> okay, and wh uh, why, what was your response to that, to that question? My response was, I typically find it hard to make friends with real people. Yeah. And I, like, jokingly have conversations, like, with myself a lot. Because yeah. I spend a lot of time at home with my pets, and every pet uh -huh. owner talks to them as if they're a person. Right. <laughs> so I feel like if I had like a CPR doll, like one of the lifelike ones that I could make look like a friend, I could like keep it as company, and I would be less lonely. It would be like body doubling, but without a live body there. So I would still be able to do what I need to do and feel like I have company, but not actually have to bother anybody to come over. Mm. It's well, people do that with sex. You know, they keep like sex dolls and stuff <laughs> as like romantic partners. But this is ba basically it would be like a platonic friend doll. Yeah, it's entirely platonic. I just like we like I dress them up. We just chill out, hang at the house, and like they are my company. If I feel like. I'm having a problem that day that I can't talk to anybody about. Bam, I have somebody to talk to, and they're not going to tell me I'm crazy or weird for my problems. So okay. I feel like it's not as weird as my fiance says it is. So you would want to dress this doll up, or what would you dress them? How would you dress them? Um, honestly, like whatever I'm feeling that day. Like if it's a jammy day, we'll both chill in sweats, right? Mm -hmm. I feel like that's acceptable. It's mm -hmm. right to match with friends. I do that a lot. Okay. What well, and now when you talk to them, would you imagine in your brain how they would respond to you? Yes, but it would always only be positive, and it's advice that's on my side. <laughs> so you, so okay. So what I'm asking is like, um, the you would be essentially projecting a personality onto the CPR doll. Would that personality be uh, just a, a reflection of your own personality, or would you try to make a friend who was different from you that I could contrast with you? I think I would make like a different, a different kind of person, someone who like has like an opposite style to me, but we get along because we're a little different and we do things kind of the same way. Okay. Um, now, uh, how serious are you about this? Are you going to try to, like, take CPR lessons so that you can get one of these dolls? I think that's the only way to get one. 
I think it is, but I don't know if I'm like that dedicated. <laughs> Hold it's on, very to... difficult to go out in public sometimes to deal with okay. people for that. <laughs> All right. I'm looking on Amazon right now for $172. You can get a CPR doll. You can't get the... Oh, well, it's just a torso. Do you need your friends to have legs? I could, I could probably get a full body one, but I think those ones are the sex ones. And I don't want people to think I'm doing something weird with my friend. Oh, you can get one that's just a baby. Now that would be that's, weird. That Look, would be here's weird. the thing. I'm open. <laughs> listen, you know me. All right, I'm I'm open minded. I'm not, you know, I don't yuck other people's, you know, yums, whatever they want to do with their life. But don't get a baby one. No, yeah, I would definitely not do that. <laughs> Although a ba- of being friends with a baby, nah, being friends with a baby would suck. Um, okay, what do you want to name this part? This this guy. Um. I honestly haven't like thought that much about it. I'm thinking maybe like like one of my like childhood cartoon icons, right? Like maybe like a Bratz doll name or something. Or like I don't know, one of the Barbie friends, like Raquel. She sucks, but I could make her a better person if she was my fake friend. <laughs> What's your name again? <laughs> I'm Julie. Julie, why do you have trouble making uh, friends that you can't buy? Why do you have trouble making friends that are fleshy people um i am very like introverted okay i consider my fiance like my best friend he's actually here right now Um, he's like all in his own world (laughs) have you have you ever had friends um i have had friends in the past and it's either they have done me wrong in some way or I've just kind of like drifted away from them because I'm really bad at keeping communication with people. How old are you? I am turning 21 this year. 21, okay. And so like in high school, do you have do you have buddies? Oh, I had like a lot of friends. I still talk to like at least four of my high school friends, but I only talk to them maybe once or twice a year okay so you had a lot of friends in high school uh, but you only talked to them once or twice a- did they all do you you don't live in the same uh like area as them do you um we all live in the same city but on different parts of it so like to see each other is like a 30 minute or more drive and only 30 two of us minutes. have our license yeah <laughs> 30 minutes is no dude 30 minutes is nothing yeah, I know. <laughs> look, here's the thing. I don't like, look, Julie. If you went and you bought a CPR doll and you dressed it up in, uh, uh, you know, and had pajama nights with it, and that was what you wanted to do with your time here on this earth, uh, and it made you happy, I wouldn't blame you for it. But yeah, it sounds like you do have friends, and um, I, I'm no, I'm no expert in what makes people feel joy in this universe, but um, I, my, I can only hypothesize that you might have more fun hanging out with them than hanging out with a CPR doll. I mean, I don't know, though, because, like, I have a very overactive imagination, and I love mm-hmm. to watch, like, movies or binge-watch TV shows, mm-hmm. and I don't have, like, a friend to binge-watch those shows with, and my partner works, like, all day, every day, and he doesn't like the shows that I like. What so about wait, what about friend. your friends? How come you how come your friends won't watch TV with you? Because they also don't like the shows that I like, and they also work more <laughs> like throughout. Okay, the week. but okay, but these friends you you became friends with them for a reason. There, there must be something that you have in common with them that makes them made you want to be their friend in the first place. What do you have in common with these people that are, you know, a thirty? minute drive away all the way in china uh video games honestly is what started all of our friendships (laughs) okay so why don't you play why don't you hang out with your friends and play video games what's stopping you from doing that because they all like never have a chance to get over here because they have other things to do and i usually just hide out in my house by myself i have a question this is a real 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 question (laughs) Do you okay. want, do you and you can be honest with me cuz again I don't I'm not an expert I lit, I've said this on the podcast already but I googled how to be happy I'm no expert in this Do you do you want friends do you want to have friends 
Um, I don't know, honestly. Having friends is kind of hard nowadays because a lot of people can be like really sneaky and it's scary because like you never know who to trust. Okay, uh, let's. I use you know you said that, and I actually want to get into that with you because a p- part of me has, uh, and may- this is a maybe a hippie-ish belief, but part of me does feel as though um, you you know people find what they're looking for. Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay, and you said yeah with hesitation because you're probably about to tell me several horrible stories of. Uh, friends <laughs> stealing things. So tell me what um, what are your what your friends? How did your friends backstab you? Oh gosh. <laughs> um, I had this one girl. Um, for the sake of the story, because I don't know if she listens to your podcast or not, we're gonna give her a fake name, and I'm just gonna call her like, I don't know, Gemma for now. I guess Gemma. that works. Okay, with um, a G, with so, a G or with a J? With a G. Okay. It doesn't. That doesn't okay, help so, the story in any way or shape or form. I just yeah. they, continue. I'm it's sorry. Still I shouldn't. Important. I, you're gonna yeah. stop talking. <laughs> so me and this girl ended up becoming from, like best friends freshman year of high school, and we stayed best friends for about three years. And then junior year, we had this big junior prom, and I had a boyfriend at the time who had gone to a different school. I brought him to my junior prom. And she ended up taking him home, and neither of them ever talked to me again after that night. Okay, all right, that's one. Give me another one. Oh, God. <laughs> You're making me think about trauma. <laughs> no, because here's the thing. Look, keep... Uh, I mean, look, you don't have to tell me. You don't have to tell... You can hang up on me right now. You have no obligation to me at all. But I just... I, here's the thing. Is I... You, it It upsets me that you at such a I mean you're also so fucking you know young still I believe I mean we're in the same age-ish bracket but but you know for you to you know this 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 girl this girl did this in high school yeah and for you for for something that's this some girl did to you in high school for you to be walking around life with this thing that you you said to me, that people can be sneaky. For that to be your fundamental belief that you're walking around with, um, mm-hmm. you know, I just it's upsetting to me. That's understandable, yeah. Because I, I, I try not to think that way. Say that again. I typically try not to think that way. It's just like. The way that society has gone and people are just, like, led to believe that, like, everybody sucks, like, all the time. It's it's hard because, like, especially with stuff on social media, people are talking about, like, oh, this person was fake, but I still loved myself. It's like, yeah, I do love me, but also I wish more people could be real. But because it's so portrayed that having a fake friend is normal all the time, everyone thinks everyone's going to do them dirty. So they do the other person bad first. Dude, people are uh, people on social media are pissed off about everyone all the time. They're just it's just, it's just everyone's mad. Go, how often do yeah. you go outside and say hi to a person and talk to them? That's fair, yeah. You know, um, any, any here's the thing, any like fundamental uh, and this is just my own anecdotal thoughts. It's like any fundamental um, belief that you have about people is just wrong. I think. Um, because I whether well whether because look you could be walking around being like I think people are um you know uh, uh always really nice and usually good and pretty chill and then you know you whatever you get f- fucked over in some way or you could be walking around being like everyone's an asshole and out for themselves and a piece of shit and then you miss you know opportunities of of genuine connection um but I I don't know I t- to be you're going to be wrong either way in some ways. You know the broken clock is is right twice a day. So, wouldn't you oh, rather yeah. wouldn't you <laughs> rather open your your arms and your eyes and your brain and your hands and um be you know look for not, look for b- positive good chill vibes as they say as opposed to Always thinking that everyone's a piece of shit all the time. 
I mean, yeah, that's understandable. I typically want to be on the, like, bright side of things. I like to think of myself as a pessimist. I think that's the right one. Pessimist? You think of yourself (laughs) as a pessimist? Yes. (laughs) Hmm. Well, I'm sorry. You know, I'm sorry to hear that, Julie, because you seem like a nice person. And, um... What do you okay? What do you do for work or school? Um, I currently don't do either. My partner works and makes money for us, and I stay home and take care of our house and both of our pets. I've been looking for on like an online job, but I haven't quite found one yet. Okay, well, are you happy? I am actually very happy. Yeah, that's awesome. Okay, maybe you should keep doing everything that you're... I mean, I'm... You should keep doing everything you're doing. Then. I don't know what I'm trying okay. to talk to you about, but, um... Uh, you know, if you're happy, it sounds like everything's working out. Get, you should get this. You should get the doll, then. Do you okay. Think the doll would, I, do you think I, the doll... Do you think the doll would make you happy? I think it would. I think it would make me a little bit more happy, yeah. All right, you should get it. All right, I appreciate that. I'm gonna have to tell my man that you said that. Okay. Um... What's he do? What's he do for work? Uh, he... <laughs> he currently, um, as far as I know, is, like, in a warehouse. Okay. <laughs> we don't talk very much about work. I just know he's not doing anything illegal or shady, so I'm Wait, proud you of don't, him. Wait, you, 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 you don't really know what he does. <laughs> We talk about it a lot. He tells me that he drives a lot. And that's pretty much the most I leave it at. It sounds like you're used to having interaction. It sounds like you're used to um, friendships or relationships where you don't don't even talk that much. Is that that true? Oh, no. Me and him talk constantly. Okay. I just, like, bother him while he's driving and we talk about stuff I'm doing. (laughs) Okay. I think you should get the doll. I think I think you would have a lot of fun. I don't. I you know here's the thing, and this is why I don't like. Uh, this is why I hate giving advice, and why I say I don't give advice. It's because I don't fucking know what makes people happy. I, I and also there's infinite variables. So what this this everything you've described to me sounds like it's work. Your life, the way you live it as it stands, sounds as though it's working for you. If you can answer the question of whether or not you're happy with a yes. I, I appreciate that. I am. I'm pretty happy with my life. Things are. Do you have any, you have any advice for me? Um, honestly, just keep gecking, Lyle. Honestly, right. like I'm. I'm proud of your progress. I love watching your streams, Thanks, dude. Man. Thanks, man. Yeah. <laughs> maybe I'll. Maybe I'll get one. I'll get one of the dolls. They're not that. I mean, look, 174 <laughs> bucks for a friend. <laughs> If you get one, can you also put it in a gecko costume and have it on stream? No, I'm gonna put mine in um, <laughs> in a in a in a speedo. And, um, <laughs> okay. And a yarmulke. Um, Julie, That's is there anything else you want to say to the people of the computer before we go? Um, hi, people. I hope you enjoyed my stories, and you guys don't think I'm weird. <laughs> no, I think you, I think you're doing everything. Right, for you. Thank you so sounds. much for that, Lyle. I needed to hear that from you. <laughs> Julie, have a good rest of the night. You take care. You too. Bye bye. <laughs> bye. See, that's the thing, right? Somebody could tell me I don't have any friends, and I'm about to go on Amazon and buy a two hundred dollar uh, CPR doll to be my friend because I don't have any friends. And then if I ask them. Okay, well, are you happy with your life? And they go, I'm very happy with my life. Then who the fuck am I to say that they're not? And then I hear that, and part of me's like, I sh- you know, I should be listening to this person about how, how they're doing it. But I, I don't know. It obsesses me that I don't... It bothers me that she has these, these fundamental beliefs that, you know, everyone sucks. I don't think that's true. I think, I think most people are doing the best they can. They, you know... I think uh, there's no sh- there's no shortage of poor decision making out there, um, but we're everyone's uh, everyone's everyone's trying everyone's trying. All right, 
Okay, let's move on. Hello. Hello. Hi, who's this? Oh my gosh, freaking! This is a good Guaya. How are you? Guaya, what's going on, Guaya? Nothing much. Just cleaning up the garage. I'm uh, I sell vintage clothes sometimes, and I'm picking my shit up off the floor. That's cool. Um, by vintage clothes, are are like, are do you just mean? What's the what is the difference between selling vintage clothes? And just uh, having a garage sale. It's very minor, but I think if you're good at selling vintage, you have you're 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 efficient in finding the people that are looking for whatever specific thing you got. You know, my sister went to China and she got me these like silk underwear that I haven't been able to wash some skid marks out of. Uh, yeah. c- w- c- would that count as vintage? It can, yeah. And if you want to really try your hardest to get them out, you can go to the dollar store and they sell this degree okay. here called Awesome Spray. No, no, no. I mean these are these are massive, and they, it's you know I haven't worn them in a while, but they still kind of smell, and I haven't been able to get the shit smell out of them. Yeah. Does that make it more vintage? Can that? Because does that mean I can sell it for more money? Potentially, potentially, it'll it'll have okay. to be a it's, it's kind of a niche thing, I guess, but. All right, I think you and I have a business idea brewing here. Yeah, man. <laughs> your name uh, is yeah, what is your name again? It's Guaya. Do you know what? It's Guaya. It's, my, like, my, it's uh, it's short for Guayaba, which is the Spanish translation of guava. It's also like my performer name. I'm a musician. Guava, like the fruit. Yes, my favorite. Uh, uh, my favorite as well. Um, is it really? Yeah, when I was, I took a Spanish in middle school, and my Spanish teacher had one day. My Spanish teacher didn't really didn't really teach Spanish. She just kind of like yeah. would bring in like different Goya brand stuff, and then make us oh, yeah. watch uh, Gabriel Iglesias stand up. <laughs> the fluffy dude. <laughs> yeah, that was her. That That's was funny. I. We I don't know any verbs or anything. I just know mm. the term fluffy but that's not any that's not spanish yeah <laughs> right on. Well, you're a performer I mean, I what do you talking, perform i play guitar and a couple other instruments but i've been playing with my own like kind of solo band kind of thing for a couple of years now i've just got like got really lucky that when i was in middle school i had a pretty good crowd of kids around me and everybody was into the same kind of stuff same kind of music so Ever since then, we've kind of just stuck around and started playing, and nobody else really wanted to go and start writing stuff, but I did, so they just kind of followed me, and we've been we've been gigging around, man. It's been fun. It's been a crazy couple of years. The term solo band uh, sounds like a, oh my God, well, there's a grammatical term for this. Holy sh- a, a word that contradicts itself. What's yeah, the word yeah, for this? Yeah. Do you know what I'm talking about? Please. I, I hear you. Yeah. That was in half a slip. That's that kind of my mistake. But I'm, I just mean that it's a band and we play live, but it's they, we play my music. You know, it's my own solo Oxymoron. project. I release all the stuff. Yeah. Oxymoron. Oxymoron. There you go. Um, <laughs> yeah. But I've right. been playing for a couple of years now and it's all my own original music, but my homie is just play with me live and stuff and we're we've all been in the jazz for a long time so we kind of try to do a little little something different when we play you know we don't want to just play the stuff like it it's on the recording I feel like that's kind of boring oxymoron you know? right that's the word oxymoron so a solo ba- yeah like so how do you be a solo band is it is it not a band is it just you or are you it's, like weird al you can play the the harmonica and the guitar and you know the, the no. drum and all that i mean i can i rec- like i record every instrument on my own that i put in my recordings but i just have my friends that play with me when we play live so it's a solo project but we got a band on yeah okay uh what inspires your music i don't know i guess isolation being around nature i've been i like i bought a four track tape recorder when I was like 14 or 15. I can't remember where it might've been like a fifth store or something, but I just kind of wanted to start piecing it together. And I don't know, man, it's a, it's a 
it's a big kind of meditative process for me and it's a, it's a big reason why i wanted to talk to you because i have recently been starting to gain some traction on social media just posting like with the reels and trying to get the content out and just you know trying to survive yeah but it's been, it's been fucking my business man like it's fogging up my head and i just i don't like it not good so Tell all right. So you're starting to get some traction on the internet with you know reels and all that stuff, and it's it's fucking with your head. Yeah, I mean, it's it's something. I guess like to start off, I've never really been a very digitally native person, which is like how I wanted to share. I normally like to describe it. I just ever since I feel like I was a part of the last. I'm I'm 22, but. I feel like I'm one of the last generations of kids that really looked for connection by like going out on the street and like riding bikes and like playing with the soccer ball and stuff, you know, just, just meeting up with other kids for the sake of just trying to find something to do, you know, and I never really okay played very many like video games or really like so, did a lot of so, stuff online until more recently. So t- t- I mean, tell me why that's fucking with your head. It's just a, I don't know, like, it's it's a part of just, like, the interface of interacting with people that aren't really there. And, like, people that are very willing and casually, like, able to give you a compliment, which is always, like, nice to see. But they're also just as willing to say, like, fuck you, or just to, like, just to try to fuck with you a little bit. For kind of no reason, you know, there's, there's always going to be people that are going to see that you're doing something and are going to want to tear you down just because of it. It doesn't really so, matter to everyone, but, you know, it's, it's, just, it's tough because if you're paying attention to one thing, you kind of have to pay attention to another. And it's So just, are you getting a lot of, like, hate comments and that's bothering you? No, not even really. That's it's kind of what I'm saying. Like, I'll have 300 people being like, this is great. I would, like, I want to hear more of this, like, give me the full version of the song or just whatever and then there's going to be two people that are just going to be out there and it's it's not something that i can even really blame them for you know because i mean i don't know like i was a dickhead when i was a kid too mm-hmm. but like i can understand just being like fuck this guy for kind of no reason but mm-hmm. still it's like it's it's making me interact with these people as if they're there and like it's just taking up too much space in my head, I guess. Like, yeah, I'm, I'm paying it too much yeah. attention. You know? you know, I'll say that I, uh, this is something I've been thinking about a lot because I'm also like so entrenched in the internet and all this stuff, and it, it fucks, fucking fuck, fucks with me uh, a lot. It's it, it's fucked with me the whole time I've been um, doing this, and it's you know. It's weird, right? Because you and I, I'm I'm 25, you're 22. We both kind of grew up with the internet. And, yeah. um, you know, we don't... You have to keep in mind, and this is what I'm trying to keep in mind, is like, mm. th- for all of human existence, okay? If you were to, like, stretch it out onto a timeline... Um, mm. And then you were to uh, pinpoint the the part of that timeline where the internet exists. It would be yeah. a, like it would it, like the timeline would span, um, you know, about a uh, uh, hundred football fields, and mm. uh, the the part where the internet was invented would be about half a blade of grass all the way at the end. Yeah, you know. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, uh, yeah, yeah. like. So it makes per- so the f- it, it fucking with your head, it fucking with my head. Of co- of course, it's fucking with our heads. We're not yeah. built for. It. We're trying yeah. to f- figure it out as it's exponentially growing and and taking us over and and um, you know, uh, bringing out the fucking worst of us and also uh, bringing out good stuff as well. Um, yeah. so I mean, cut yourself some slack. First of all, yeah on that sure. front and it yeah and i mean it's something that i've been aware of for a long time like i've never really trusted my phone in that kind of sense where like once i got a smartphone when i was like getting into high school i realized how much of a pull it has towards my attention and how much of a 
time suck it can be and just like I just understood that oh I'm kind of powerless like if I just pull a YouTuber right now I'm about to be here for like three hours and right. like there's kind of right. no two ways about it you know and of course it's it's something that we weren't designed to interact with and there's going to be a period where we're still trying to kind of get used to it but still as a creative it's something that is especially with social media one of the most powerful tools to ever exist you know and it's like I know. even even drawing the example to your show it's like could you imagine in the 70s when the only real media outlets that you had were guarded by people who had to make an investment in you and had to like put yeah. serious money into getting you out there this is something that's like you kind of have to stay on the straight and narrow because ultimately you want to make money but now that creating is totally free everybody's free to make kind of whatever they want you know it's like the therapy yeah. so is something that can only exist right now yeah 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 um and you know um mm, yeah, that's a hard thing to reckon with. I think about that a lot, right? Because the internet uh, has is a total mind fuck that we are not uh, our our primitive animal brains are not uh, uh, equipped to you know deal with. Um, yeah, you know, especially not lots of attention on the internet. Because um, mm-hmm. you know, I mean, most people that ever lived, they only knew like ten people, and. Uh, <laughs> You know, now yeah. I know like about a hundred thousand fucking people, um, yeah. my which was never supposed to happen. Um, yeah, never. <laughs> but it's but it's you're right. I mean, there's the whole positive. There's a, there's an immense uh, you know optimistic and positive part of it where uh, it it allows um, you know independent artists and creators to form communities and share their stuff, uh, which is a good thing. So you know. Mm-hmm. I mean, look, man. If I were you, uh, what you're, you're a musician? Yes, sir. Um, hmm. Here's what. I, here's the only thing I think is is really important is that mm-hmm. you're making whatever music you want to make, and you're not uh, making music that you think will go viral. Yeah. Because nothing. No, I mean, nothing will make you less fucking happy than just like trying to feed the machine you know and by the way i've learned this the only thing you get the only thing you get out of feeding the machine is that you get to feed the machine more damn that's that's crazy (laughs) i never thought of it like that i'm still trying to comprehend that fact i mean i i you know i say all kinds of shit on this podcast that i'm trying to um actually like internalize into my own life but that's just where my head's at yeah and i mean i think it's i think it's really crazy it's something that i i mean i'm gonna i'm gonna give you your flowers for a second if i can but over the past like year and a half that i've been listening to you because i've listened to every single podcast since then i just yeah. if i'm on a walk or if i'm on a drive or whatever you're, you're the guy you're my man i'm throwing you on you know well thanks man but i really appreciate that i i really admire the ability or I guess the un- even if it wasn't intentional, the amount of people that you brought together who have no real connection aside from being entertained by watching somebody be empathetic to somebody else's problems, where I think you have a very great personality and energy. Thanks, man. The way that you interact with people. But I mean, it's just, it's crazy because I think that you uh, you hear people from all over the country and even all over the world on this pod, you know, and it's it's just it's so it's so mind boggling to think that all this came of you just wanting to put a gecko costume on and talk into the voice. <laughs> that is the internet. <laughs> well, uh, well, thank. What is your name again? Guaya. Well, thanks, Guaya. Uh, I appreciate that. Uh, you've inspired me. I'm gonna go to the store and I'm gonna get some guava soda. That's my favorite. Yeah. You ever had the Goya guava soda? Mm, actually, no. You, you, should, you gotta go have the Goya soda? guava soda. It's very good. And, have you tried and, the, and, and the jarrito one? The what is it? The jarritos? The jarritos? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know I have had the jarritos. The jarritos. They're good. The jarrito guava? The guava ones are freaking sick. Those are heavy. I've never heard of the Goya ones. Uh, I'm going to I'm gonna have to seek to that. 
Is there anything else you want to say to the people at the computer before we go? I want to say something to you first. I freaking wrote a song about you. You wrote a, what, what was the song? It. It's called Therapy Gecko. It's on Spotify. <laughs> oh, shit. Okay, how do I find it? You just look up the word Therapy Gecko and Guaya on Spotify and it should be up. You freaking, dude, I've been calling for so long. I've been calling this show for like past like five months. Just, just oh, trying shit. to talk to you. Just, just, just well, talk I'm to you, glad but, we. I'm glad ooh. we finally got to talk. Yeah, man. I'm. It's, it's such a blessing to be able to talk to you, brother. But it's a blessing that uh, any of this. <laughs> I, 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 I think my life has gotten beyond any any point that I can uh, comprehend. So, I don't know. Thanks, thanks for being with me. Of course, man. I hope to catch you if you Take have care, a California man. date on your tour. Take I you will in. November something. November something, I'll find you. Take care, man. Yeah, have a good night, man.